Hello and welcome everyone. My name is Mark Henry. I'm a senior engineer with Automantic North American office located in Charlotte, North Carolina. Today we're going to be talking about how to create actionable reports with NMIS 8 and OP reports. Uh, so for everyone who's attending today and for those who have signed up uh, but aren't able to attend, uh, we will be sending you links to the online recording. Um, Obviously, that means we're having to record the session for you. Uh, everyone's on mute just to keep the background noise down a bit. If you do have questions, please feel free to submit them anytime. Uh, use the GoToWebinar chat or questions panel, uh, depending on which version of GoToWebinar you have running, whether it's the, uh, uh, the locally installed version or the web version, you'll have a different option in there. So feel free to submit your questions. We have a couple people uh, monitoring the questions board here live, and we'll try to answer them as they come in. Uh, when, the, uh, when the webinar is done, you'll be queued up and have the opportunity to complete a short survey. It's only three questions, really. Uh, we value your feedback. So it's just uh, how well did I do? Uh, how well was the, uh, uh, the webinar content itself? And then uh, what webinar content would you like to see? So if you can just take you know, a, a minute or two minutes and answer that truthfully and honestly, I uh, would appreciate it. Uh, I can't become a better speaker without your, uh, without your feedback. So in today's session, we're going to cover three high-level uh, pieces. The first is uh, how to use NMIS 8's built-in reporting to create really actionable to-do lists. Right? These are lists that will help drive engineers and managers to improve the performance and quality of the network. Uh, we're going to talk briefly about how to create custom reports using NMIS 8's uh, sample uh, scripts. And then we're going to talk about how Obmantic's OP Reports solution enhances NMIS 8's reporting and how you can use uh, OP, OP Reports to really drive actionable reports for both engineers and management teams. So without further ado, let's, uh, let's get into the subject matter at hand. So uh, just to touch on briefly, uh, it, it doesn't matter, your, your group, your team may not follow ITSM or ITIL or COBIT or or some kind of a structured uh, uh, model for doing IT business, although I, I, we do really recommend that you do uh, look at uh, at least adopting some of the processes and, and checklists from ITSM and ITIL. Uh, if you are using IT service management, the ITSM maturity model contains uh, five different levels of kind of performance. And as your levels increase, the value of the organization of what you do increases as well. So using really focused, targeted uh, reporting helps uh, address lots of bits from level one, level two, level three, and even well into level four. So all of these build on each other. Uh, you'll notice we try to refer back to the ITSM maturity model throughout all of our webinars. And so as you start stacking on different uh, Obmantic uh, network monitoring solutions, IT asset auditing solutions, as you start interconnecting those pieces, you start really filling in the blanks for level one, two, three, and, and well into level four. A quick note for those of you who are following along, we do have a copy of today's PowerPoint uploaded to the handouts panel. So if you're, if you're viewing this live, you can go to the GoToWebinar handouts panel and you can download a copy of today's PowerPoint directly from there. Uh, we will be posting this as well, so if you're watching this uh, later on, whether you're getting it from YouTube or you're getting it from uh, Obmantic's channel or the blog section on, on our website, you can download a PDF version of today's PowerPoint from there as well. So let's talk about architecting the solution, the pieces that we're going to talk about today. So the, the core piece today is Obmantic's free and open source solution, NMIS, which handles the fault and performance management uh, side of network monitoring. So if you look at the graphic on the right, it's the, it's the center, it's the hub of that circle of components. The next piece we're going to talk about today uh, is an Obmantic commercial solution, uh, and that's OP Reports. So OP Reports plugs into NMIS and provides additional features and functionality to NMIS. Uh, there's also a bonus section in today's PowerPoint. We won't be covering it during today's webinar, uh, but those slides are available to you. So there's a, a, an optional enhancement or a bonus section in today's presentation that touches on reporting in OP events as well. Uh, 
And just a quick touch today on uh, the automatic application flow. Uh, apologies for all the crazy background lines. Apparently that only happens sometimes when PowerPoint's in, uh, in the slideshow presentation mode. Uh, as you can see, uh, OP reports is on the far left side. Um, Augmented applications are designed to scale horizontally as well as vertically using OPHA, which is our co commercial high availability um, solution. It allows you to create uh, a layer of polling servers and then a, an upper layer of master servers above that. OP reports gathers information from NMIS, uh, generates local reports at the polling server level, and then can make those reports available on the master server. So no matter how many polling servers you have, they can roll all their reports and results up to one master server or one or more master servers. And then all those reports are available there. And of course, OP reports can also email those reports out to whatever email list that you may have out on your network. Some important references. These are, these are things I really recommend that you bookmark. Uh, don't worry about trying to, to, to copy these from the, from the video. Again, a copy of the PowerPoints available in the handout section of GoToWebinar, or if you're looking at this on YouTube, uh, it's available from the Opmantic blog. If you go to opmantic.com and then select Learn from the menu, uh, you can find the video there in the, uh, in the webinar section. There'll be a, a PDF copy there as well. And all of, these, uh, all of these URLs will be in there. So three important bookmarks. Uh, I think this is important reading for everyone. These are not long blogs at all. 10, 15 minutes for each one. I think it's a good hour worth of time, but it's, it's not the time that you're gonna spend reading these three uh, blogs. It's the time you're gonna spend thinking about the concepts that are presented in these blogs and then trying to figure out how you would apply those in your day-to-day -day jobs and in, in how you use NMIS and potentially OP reports to help improve the, uh, the quality and the performance of your network. All right, so let's jump into NMIS 8's reporting. Um, moving forward from here, we're gonna present some concepts and we'll be toggling between PowerPoint and uh, the Automatic demo server. So we'll be looking at NMIS 8 and then also at, uh, at OP reports. So the first thing to really come to grips with in NMIS 8 is the concept that um, the way we're gonna group reports mentally uh, I, I shift them into two categories. And the, the first is, how do I improve information collection? That means how do I improve the quality, the speed, the reliability, and the depth of information that NMIS gets from the devices that you want NMIS to monitor, right? So how do I make sure that we're gathering everything that can be gathered and we're storing it the best way possible? So that's the first category that we're gonna touch on. The second is, how do I then take the information that's been gathered, that performance information, and use that information to improve system performance? So those, that's a series, separate series of reports that we're gonna take a look at. So let's talk about improving information collection. And there's, there's three primary reports that we're gonna take a look at, and I'm gonna shift over to uh, 10 Miss 8 now. So this is the NMIS uh, 8.6.5G interface. This is the primary dashboard. I'm gonna close out a few panels here just so we have some real estate available to us. And the first one I'm gonna check on is reports, current collect update time. So reports, current collect update time. Now you'll notice whenever I go to reports, I'm always selecting the reports from the current menu rather than from the historical menu. The reason I do that is that if you go to the historical menu, you cannot sort these columns. In the current menu, you can. So the reports that are listed in the current, the menu headings are generally alive. You can click on the menu headings. So for example, if I wanted to sort on update time, I can click on update time. It'll give me the, uh, the longest update time. And then I can start looking at these and I can start troubleshooting these issues. Now, one of the reasons that we look at this is the longer the update time, generally speaking, the more overloaded or the more taxed the device is. Now, it, it could very well just be latency. It could be just the, the cost of uh, uh, the speed of light between 
the collection system and this device could be slowing uh, slowing down the update time. But if those really aren't a factor, you need to start looking at things like CPU and memory usage on that device, how loaded it might be, um, what else, what other processors are running on that device that may be making it uh, or giving it a really slow update time. You also want to sort on collect time. So I'm going to click on that header and I'm going to reverse sort it because I want to look at the uh, the longest collect times. So you can see longest collect times are 48 seconds. It's on this device called uh, Hell. And uh, this one's collecting specifically on WMI content. So you can see two entries for Hell here. And let me just uh, let me just highlight these with my pen. So there are two sentry, uh, entries here. One is uh, collecting on SNMP and WMI, and the other one's collecting just on SNMP. So WMI takes about another two seconds, uh, about a second and three quarters to gather information. But it also takes uh, about five seconds more to do an update uh, when, when you're doing uh, WMI as well as SNMP on a Windows server. So I like to sort on these columns, and again, uh, try to determine what why is it taking so long for these devices to report? Are they overloaded? Are they under uh, under a tremendous amount of burden? Do they need more resources? Are they strapped for CPU or memory? Um, uh, are there different processes uh, being deprioritized? So is SNMP at a very low prioritization in the process pool? So that's the first piece that I want to look at. Um, I'm often asked, how can I how can I gain access to this information? What can I do with it? Uh, this is all HTML. You'll notice at the top of this window, there are three buttons up here. So one is to dismiss the window, one is to refresh the window, and the other one is to open the window in a new tab. Now I'm going to click that one. This is this new page. And you'll see I'm going to get a new tab. That's just the way I have Firefox set up. It's set up to open a, a link in a new tab. Again, that's a browser setup. That's not a setup in, uh, in NMIS at all. Now from here, what I can do is I can do things like file print. I, in, uh, I happen to be running on a, on a Mac. Um, I can print this to a PDF. I can save it as HTML if I want to. Uh, what I would normally do is I would sort this by whichever column I'm, I'm interested in at the time. So for example, I might sort by uh, update time. And let me reverse sort this again. There we go. So I've got that I've got that BNE Lab P2, and then I've got BNE Lab P1, P3. These all seem like extraordinarily high update times for me. Um, I would expect uh, these devices to be around uh, 15 or 20 seconds at most. So anything above kind of that line, I'd want to start looking into and trying to determine. Again, is it latency? Is it just the connection time between my polling server and that device, and then the the information coming back to me? Uh, or is there something about the load or something about the pathing or prioritization? So that's number one on my list is looking at collect and update times. Number two on my list is looking at the NMIS runtime graph. So that's going to be system, host diagnostics, NMIS runtime graph. And now this, again, this is all about the, the computer that we're on. And I'm just going to take and I'm going to uh, increase. I'm going to zoom a little bit here in my browser so we can get down to this. But you can see we're covering a lot of information here. So we have the total amount of runtime it takes to do something, the collect time that's happening, so 36.24 seconds to do a collection. Maximum is 134. Total runtime is an update, total amount of time to run an update. And then NMIS processes, how many processes average? We're running 1.3, max 7.5. And then how many parallel processes can be run? Average is 10.8, max is 18.8. So these are all graphed out here. And what you're looking for is you're looking for things that are, are spiking. So for example, this one, uh, these spikes as well maybe even this connection, and trying to understand why these are taking so long at those time periods. Uh, are you clashing with a backup? Are you running into issues with bandwidth uh, restraint? Uh, are you running into uh, load on, on servers or on switches and routers? Um, 
as you start to understand these pieces, uh, the, these go hand in hand with the collect and update time, right? Because this is what this is representing. This is the total uh, update and collection time at each of these individual cycles. And of course, with the NMIS graphs, you can zoom into these. So I just clicked on that graph. It popped up a larger window for me. But I can zoom in by clicking at the top of the graph. And I can scroll to the right by clicking on the right side of the graph. And so if I want to get a bigger picture of this, I can just click around. And you'll notice that the, uh, the time window shifts down a little bit. I can get closer into that time period for that one spike. There we go. Let me scroll right, there we are. So I can see that this one took almost 300 seconds to complete at that point. So for two polling cycles, it was taking a tremendous amount of time to collect and to run and process through all the information. And of course, you can export this data from these graphs as well. You can see that here. You can get statistics, you can export it, and you can do an advanced export from here as well. You can also copy this uh, URL and save this and pass this around to anyone that you need to. So you can pass this URL around and it will reload this exact graph at this moment um, for whoever, uh, whoever you pass it to that of course has uh, a valid NMIS login. All right, next section on information, uh, improving information collection. We're gonna look at system, configuration check, node admin summary. Now this is gonna give me a complete breakdown of all of my devices. And uh, let me just uh, put myself back to 100% on the Zoom. Now this gives me a breakdown of all of the devices on this server that NMIS is monitoring. So this is every device that's been loaded into the system. What I care about right now is, the, is only the exceptions, only the things with problems. So you'll notice in the top left-hand corner, there's a, there's a menu highlight there for only exceptions. So I'm gonna click that. And this is gonna boil down to just a list of devices that have problems. So again, that was system, configuration check, node admin summary, and then I selected only exceptions. Now the great thing here, uh, the amount of information that's included, right? Uh, when was the last collection done? You'll notice there are some that are unknown. This, this device may never have been collected. Uh, some of these, 29 May, 29 May, 23 May, right? Last update, 23 May. So these, these ones were updated recently. These were updated last night, um, but it's been a while. It's been too long for some of these devices. You'll also notice, we just look at, uh, you'll see things like, uh, is ICMP working? False. Is WMI working? You'll notice all of these are, are NA, but none of these are Windows machines. That's fine. Uh, is SNMP working? No, SNMP is not working on this device. There's no community string, and that's probably why SNMP is not working. No community string has been put in. And you'll even see here that this is the default community string. So this one is using public as the community string. Uh, you'll also notice here that this one is the default model. So every device, NMIS will uh, sele select the, uh, the type of model that it assigns, the uh, uh, collection model, based on the device. So this one's a Cisco IOS 7200 device. It should be selecting the Cisco model. And it's not. So we want to figure out why. Why is it not selecting the right device here? So these are the things that you, uh, um, you start breaking down. This should be done, I would recommend, uh, if, you're, if you're setting NMIS up at your organization, um, I, would do, I would look at those three reports every single morning. I would have an engineer tasked to look at those three uh, information collection points every single morning and then take action. And specifically, this report, this piece, and act on every single error that's in here and address each of these.
All right. So now let's talk about system performance. Again, uh, a copy of this PowerPoint uh, is in the uh, in the chat window, so feel free to uh, to download a copy of that, or we'll have a copy of this in PDF format available uh, probably tomorrow uh, on Wednesday, available from the blog section on the uh, Automatic website. So going back over to Enmis. So now let's talk about how you improve system performance. Once you're sure that you're collecting everything you can collect, or or you're working on that, right? So you're you're getting the you're getting your WMI uh, account names and passwords, and you're getting your SMP community string set up, and you're you're improving the quality of that. Now you want to start looking at improving the quality of system performance. And so there are a series of reports that you can run. So we're going to look at reports, current, top 10. So when I'm working with just NMIS in my uh, in my uh, environment, I'm starting here from this. Now you'll notice that uh, it'll come in top 10 nodes by average response time. And it'll start with things that are not responding. So those two things are not responding. That's a problem. This one, not responding, right? Anything that's not a number is a problem. The next thing you want to do is you want to look at the average response time. Look at this, 668 seconds, or milliseconds, excuse me, 661, 664, 623. So my recommendation, what I do, uh, is every day I have an engineer look at the top three things in this list, understand why they are the way they are, uh, determine if it's acceptable or not, and then start digging into improving the quality of it. And so if we scroll down through these, you'll see you have top 10 nodes by CPU loads. Now notice that's routers only, devices marked as routers only. Uh, top 10 nodes by percent processor memory, routers only again. Top 10 nodes by percent IO memory, routers only. Top 10 interfaces by percent utilization top 10 interfaces by traffic. And then we'll go down to top 10 errors and discards. And frankly, anything that appears in here is something to look into, right? Because you shouldn't have any errors or discards. Uh, obviously it does happen. Uh, you've got latency, you've got network traffic, uh, you have static electricity, you've got bad uh, cable uh, connections and endpoints, loose connections, whatever. But if you focus on uh, the top three in each category and working and remediating on those every single day, um, and you do that every single day for a month, every working day for a month, and there are anywhere from 20, uh, 19 to about 22 working days, depending on uh, which month of the year it is. But if you, if you do this every single day, if you have someone assigned to remediate and you follow each of these pieces that I'm walking through today, I'm telling you, you will improve the quality and the performance of your network by 50% in 30 days. All right, so now we've gone to reports, current, top 10, and I'm gonna just slide that over to the left, or the right, rather, and now I'm gonna open up another top 10. That's gonna be network performance. Network performance, top 10. Now, these are two different two different views, right? And primarily, it's uh, the period of time that's covered, right? So if you look at the, uh, the network performance top 10, that's just covering a 15 minute, the last 15 minute time window. Whereas the report allows you to select the period, right? So you can look at the last 15 minutes, you can look at the last day. So we're actually looking at the last day by default. You can look at the last week and the last month, and you can even select the time period. I bring up this uh, the 15 minute version of this, just because I like to see what is going on now, what's happening now on my network. And I wanna be able to compare and contrast because we often get questions about these two uh, these two reports and how they differ. Um, they're very, very similar. You'll notice that there are more pieces, there are more sections to the uh, the current top 10 than there is to the network performance top 10. The next piece I want you to look at is availability. So we're going to look at, again, reports, current, availability. 
Now, because I opened up the current, I can change the selection period. It defaults to day, but I can select the last 15 minutes, day, week, and month. I can select the start and end periods. Um, I also have the ability to sort on the column headings. So for example, I can sort on percent availability. You'll notice that I have one here that's not a number, right? That's that San Francisco router. That San Francisco router is causing us some heartache. We want to find out why it's not reporting. I want to reverse sort it. And you'll notice that now we have this guy, uh, Ubuntu. So Ubuntu has 0% availability. Now for me, uh, I look at my SLA and then uh, I work backwards from my SLA. So if, if my SLA, for example, is 99.9%, so 99.95, that's okay. I would want to look at everything below my SLA and find out why that availability is not where it wants to be. And again, depending on what your manpower is, you might just concentrate on the top three today. And then tomorrow you run this report again and you concentrate on the next three. And then the next three. The whole while is you're, you're looking to improve the availability and understand why it is something other than 100%. Uh, at the end of the day, all, all of these efforts are really playing towards the ability of, of your group, your business, your department to deliver quality service to the rest of the organization, right? You're trying to identify where your bottlenecks are, where your challenges are, uh, where you're, you're short on, um, on bandwidth, uh, where you're short on CPU or memory or where devices are running hot or maybe they're just old and tired and you want to be able to identify those those kind of um, those funnel points and address those pieces, whether it's by shifting traffic to other routes, whether it's by replacing the device, whether it's by upgrading uh, the BIOS and the memory, the operating system that's on it, um, giving it more memory, more CPU power, you know, understanding what the what's causing the load or causing the problem on the device, and then addressing that piece. After you address availability, the next piece is uh, dealing with your monitored services. So if you've configured NMIS to monitor services, and uh, NMIS can monitor services on anything with uh, an intelligent operating system. So you can go service desk, monitor services, and now you can see all services, running services, and services with problems. So I'm going to pick services with problems because those are the things I want to concentrate on today. And so, for example, I have one server. I have Hell. Uh, it's got a service called HTTP. HTTP is down. It was last tested uh, the 29th May at 1828 uh, server time. And so I want to figure out why these services are down, why they're not reporting correctly. Um, is Hell running the HTTP service at all? Should it be monitoring that service? Can I can I turn that service monitor off? Uh, you know, why is it not running? Right? Has the service stopped? Has someone stopped it for uh, for maintenance, for testing? Uh, did the server reboot recently, and maybe the service didn't come back up? It didn't uh, it didn't recover from the boot? Uh, has it been killed by the uh, out of memory killer, by the um killer? So understanding what's going on with that, and again remediating that issue, understanding what it is. The whole point, cutting down background noise, getting rid of the static, um, helping improve the quality of the network overall for all of your users. That cuts down background static and troubleshooting calls coming into the help desk and allows you to concentrate on further improving the quality of your network. Last thing we're gonna look at are ongoing events, service desk, alerts, events. So this is gonna give us a list of all open or unacknowledged events. So events that are stateful, like a light switch, uh, is the light on or is the light off? Uh, those events will self-clear. Uh, events that are not stateful come on and stay on until someone acknowledges them. And so you can uh, you can manually acknowledge events. So for example, I can uh, acknowledge all events for uh, specific devices. And then I can come down to the bottom and I can submit those acknowledgements. And you can see there are lots and lots and lots and lots of really open events that are here. So now I've just closed out a bunch of events and I can continue acknowledging however many I want to. 
and all these uh, these inactive events, these are things that have um, have cleared and need to be acknowledged. So I can clear those out. And so we've gotten rid of a lot of pieces that are here. So it's walking through these, and it's not just walking through and clearing, which is what I just did. I just acknowledge these events, but it's understanding why do I have BGP peer down on this Asgard on this uh, on this router? What is going on with this? And I've got this on two different interfaces. So what's happening here? Why is this happening? Why am I losing my my BGP? Same thing here on the BNE router. Proactive response time horrible. Value 295, threshold 150. Wow. Right? High number of system processes. Test of value with 203 is warning. Huge. Wow. Why so many system processes? So same thing. Um, whether you prioritize it by device or you take the top event in each device and you start getting someone to understand what's happening on that device. Is the device overloaded? Does it need more resources? Does it need more bandwidth? Uh, what's happening to it? and uh, then clearing out and acknowledging these once it's been addressed, once it's been uh, decided on, or adjusting the threshold to change when the alarm goes off, right? You always run into the, the mythical router sitting in a uh, an unair conditioned closet that runs hot, but it works well enough, uh, and it's it's impractical to relocate the, the router from the from the closet, right? So, you know, have people pile things on top of it, have they wrapped the thing in a blanket, uh, have they wrapped it in plastic wrap uh, and it's not getting any air at all and now it's overheating and because it's overheating it's also creating errors and discards not just high temps so taking a look at those pieces and just like the earlier reports you can always click the uh, the new page button here and open this either in a new window or in a new tab depending on how your browser is set up you can also right click on these links uh, because they are contextual it is a browser right this is all rendered in html5 so I can right click, I'll get the browser's contextual menu and I can hit open link in new tab, open it in new window, open it in private window if you want to do private browsing as well and uh, and pop that up in a new window and then you can always save that out as a PDF uh, and use that. So those PDFs, the idea that I can print to a PDF, I love that capability uh, from the Mac operating system because I can take these pieces and I can either print them to a PDF uh, or I can output them to HTML and import that into Word. And I can immediately create a, a list. I can also go straight down through here. And because there's a text, I can just copy this if I want to. And I could paste this directly into something like Excel. So it gives me a, it gives me a, a pretty, pretty quick way of, uh, uh, of accessing information and, uh, and passing it along to be looked at. Heading back over to PowerPoint now. So that concludes the, the basics for, for NMS8 reporting. We're gonna talk briefly about how to create custom reports uh, in NMS8 using scripts. So uh, NMS8 is free and open source. It is your, again, it's your hub of your performance and fault monitoring system. It comes with predefined sets of reports and interfaces and lots and lots of good information. I, re I really recommend if you spin up NMS8 or if you have NMS8 running at your organization, go through the menus and see what, what each menu offers. What kind of windows or widgets, as we call them, pop up. Um, you can lay out your own dashboard, of course, and then save that using save window positions. So that that's your dashboard layout for you. Um, but sometimes those reports aren't enough and you need to be able to create something that's custom. So we do ship uh, with NMS8, we do ship with lots and lots of sample scripts. Now these are all Perl scripts. You'll notice they all end in .pl. Uh, so these are Perl scripts. Uh, the first sets are located in NMS8 forward slash admin forward slash samples. And uh, there are actually more scripts in that directory than what I have here. But these ones were uh, were examples that I thought were, were good pieces and were how I learned to create reports uh, at the command line. So for example, config format uh, is a great example of how to read and write configuration files. So NMIS 8 configuration files, it shows you how to uh, call NMIS's in internal um, functions and methods 
to read different configuration files, open them, and then write them back out again. And Ms. Scratch uh, shows you how to read specifically the nodes.emmis file, which is the primary list, is the primary list of all of your devices and all their settings. Uh, it also walks you through how to edit attributes and then create a list that's printed out to the command line. And of course, you can always run something like nmisscratch.pl and pipe the results of that file rather than to the command line. You could pipe it to a file, which then you can do something with. nmissysscratch is a great example of how to load a specific device. So nmissysscratch takes as an argument a device name. So nmissscratch just goes through the entire nodes.nmiss file and does it, goes through everything, whereas nmissysscratch takes a device name as an argument, loads specific information about that device, and then generates a report based on the information. A really dynamic example is RRD report over max. What that does is it walks through every single interface, looks at the maximum uh, uh, reported usage of that interface, and compares that against what that, what that device reported back is the maximum bandwidth on the interface, and then tries to tell you if, if maybe that interface, uh, if the setting on that interface on the device uh, is either too high or too low, right? So what's the real bandwidth on that interface? So that's kind of a neat little comparison example. Um, it runs you through lots of different math samples. Uh, it's a great way of how to cycle through data that's in the RRD files. So RRD, again, is round robin database. So we use RRD uh, in NMIS 8 to store all of our uh, live data. Uh, we use JSON files to render the screen, the data that's uh, presented on all the NMIS uh, interfaces. Uh, but we use RRD as the backend database currently. Uh, we also have several good examples in the, uh, in the NMIS 8 slash admin directory itself. Uh, one that I would uh, really call your attention to is billinggraph.pl. It is a fantastic example of creating a custom graph from data. So if, if, if you're looking in Enmis and there isn't a graph for something you want, um, and you want to be able to create uh, you know, some kind of a, a, a one-off thing that you, you, you can call by a cron job, maybe, maybe uh, generate a, a file and then uh, email that file to people. Th this is a great example. Um, look at billinggraph.pl. It walks you through lots of different math calculations, how to open and close different types of files, gather information, uh, do some math calculations like 95th percentile usage. Um, and then from, the, from, from that, it, it will actually output a static uh, graphic of a, of a graph that you can then uh, circulate around to your people. Another excellent example is exportnodes.pl. Now this is designed to actually create a CSV file from all of the devices in the nodes.nmis file. And what's great about export nodes is once you open that and you start taking a look at how it cycles through nodes.nmis, how it formats the CSV file, it'll become really, really obvious how the system works. Um, lots of lots of looping back and forth doing calculations. But uh, you could, if you if you if you look through exportnodes.pl, and you look through billinggraph.pl, you might give it some thought and say, well, gee, I could I could export nodes, and maybe I could run something like billinggraph and generate graphics, um, and then embed those in the CSV file and open that in Excel. So there's there's all kinds of different things that you might do there. Uh, the next one that's a good example is findipslanodes.pl. So that's a great example, again, of cycling through not just the nodes.nmis files, but the RRD files as well, and looking for which devices have IPSLA information, right? Which ones are running IPS, uh, IPSLA, uh, whether they are uh, set up as IPSLA uh, uh, hosts or responders, and, and gathering information about that device and about the IPS, IPSLA probes that are on that device or how it's responding. So that is a great example, again, of gathering more information. Um, lots of these things, you might start thinking of ways to combine these together uh, to create really complex reports with lots of really good information.
So you've you've worked on NMIS 8, you've looked through all the reports, you've you've used the reports to improve your collection, you've used the NMIS's uh, reporting to uh, to help improve the performance of your network, but you want to get more. You want to you want to get more information. You want to do a higher level of reporting. So let's take a look at, uh, at Obmantic's OP Reports commercial module. So OP Reports plugs into NMIS. So we have at the top of the screen the link to the uh, OP Reports uh, wiki page, the homepage for, uh, for OP Reports. Lots of good examples there, lots of good information. I'm going to switch over to the demo. So in all, there are 18 different classifications of reports that are here. Uh, each of these have multiple ways of customizing these reports. So for example, if I hit uh, just create node report for, uh, for health report, and then I hit advanced, you'll see there's lots of options that are here for me. So it's everything from giving the report a description, uh, uh, picking what, what devices are included, so I, I can include devices by regular expressions. I can use it by NMIS group. I can pick them from a list. So I can actually, uh, you know, I can actually get a list of nodes and pick and choose which ones. Uh, I can create a file and upload it. I can uh, create a, a node and interface file for certain types of reports that require interfaces. I can group those interfaces together if I want to uh, using a type list. So there's lots of different options that are here. Uh, start and end date for the reports, hours. So I can do things like uh, Monday through Friday, nine to five. I can do weekend hours. I can do after hours reports. Um, I can do reports in multiple formats, HTML, CSV, uh, Excel. Uh, I can give the report a custom name if I want to. I can pick things like, do I use the plain node name or the display name for it? And do I use the interface description or the interface's display name? So many, many different things that you can select here. including embedding graphs. So lots of the things that you might do at the command line with NMIS 8, where you might create a custom script, many of those thoughts went into OP reports and the, the way people are, are writing custom scripts and the types of things that they're reporting on. So let's just take a, a quick look at a report. So I'm gonna pick one of these health reports here. And we're going to look at node health for the last 24 hours. So you'll notice that this is formatted in HTML. This is all live. So I can click on the device name. I can drill directly into that device. Um, this report happens to include some to-do lists. So for example, conditions and actions, uh, what things are happening and what things need to be worked on. You'll see that we also use color coding in the far left, so red things that really, really have problems, then yellow, then green. So that gives you a prioritization immediately for taking action on, uh, on events that you're seeing. So the node health report is one very, very important report. It's one that we recommend strongly, uh, followed by the node availability report. Now the node availability report is a good one. I like this, this is really an SLA report at the end of the day. Because look at what this uh, what this report gives you. So it gives you percentage of downtime. It gives you packet loss. How much percentage of time there was no data moving through that uh, that device? It's uptime, it's downtime, and how long that time period was. So right away, immediately, you have the ability to determine what your SLA was. So out of the entire reporting period, out of 24 hours, you had five minutes of downtime or one polling cycle, this device didn't respond. And so going down through this list, working through this list, looking at amount of downtime, here's one where you hit 99.95%, uh, you hit so it was down 0 0.05, five minutes of downtime, one polling cycle, five minutes of no data, and some good packet losses there. And you can move uh, all the way down through this again. Now, sometimes reports like this take a little bit of time to educate a client on. Um, and it's important when you're setting things like SLAs to understand that 
um, having a missed polling cycle. Uh, so for example, our, our server's polling these devices once every five minutes. And so to miss one polling cycle, one polling cycle, a one five minute window in a 24 hour time span is not unusual. All it would take would be for that, uh, that device to be uh, a little taxed for system memory, uh, maybe a, a little bit of latency on your network and the, the system doesn't respond fast enough. And uh, you, you know, you've got a little bit of reporting problems. Here's a perfect example. You've got a you've got a device that's uh, that's had six days, seven hours, and 25 minutes of of no data. So that's that's uh, that's pretty huge. All right, and then you can see uh, see hell here. We uh, we noticed earlier that its availability was low. That's around 80 percent. And you can see that it's having some problems here, so we'd want to look into that, look into that device, so we can address that availability issue, and make sure that it's meeting its SLA. So you've got the Node Health report, the Node Availability report. You also want to look at the WAN report. So any device that's uh, identified as a WAN device, WAN type device, again, conditions router has very low interface availability. WAN link has acceptable usage. Investigate device and carrier for interface problems. And then it starts breaking into information. And we can go through this. Router has very low interface availability. Interface lab switch. So this one breaks down each of the interfaces. And you can go through each of these. And again, all of these reports can come out. Uh, here's a... Uh, Here's a good piece here. Average in errors, average out discards. Very high. To me, that would be unacceptable. I'd want to be looking into that. Especially if it isn't something that's just uh, transitory that just happened during this one 24-hour reporting period. If it's something that repeats and has some kind of pattern, I'd want to understand why, what's driving that. And the last reports are the traffic usage, summary, and snapshot. So you scroll down towards the bottom. So let's take a look at a, at a snapshot report. So primary link report, coverage seven days. And let's take a look there. And we have no data. Excellent. We'll have to take a look and see why those aren't reporting. Let's take a look at the traffic usage. There we go. So traffic in, traffic out, traffic in and out as a combined reporting period, the description of each interface, and again, these are all live, so I can drill into these interfaces if I want to and see what's happening. And all of these are available in different types of, uh, you can get them in CSVs, you can get these in JSON files, you can get these output to Excel as well. So we showed this screen uh, a, a little bit, the idea of how you can customize different reports, right? So each report has slightly different options. Uh, generally speaking, uh, you can customize things like the, the description, the report name, device interface naming, uh, detail level. Thresholds are an important piece. Uh, the idea down at the bottom here, you can actually set thresholds. And that will, uh, that will actually add additional layers to those reports that, that allow thresholding. You can set uh, utilization thresholds, you can show utilization thresholds, and you can even do show only things that are outside that. So you create a very small report that only shows things that are, in this example, at the 80% or higher level. Uh, in the example uh, screen cap, 
We also have an option for showing the 95th percentile. And you can do uh, in utilization, out utilization, or combined in and out. So depending on how you want to do that as well. And you can, of course, uh, because we do support RBAC and the concept of, of keeping track of who can see what. You can uh, assign authorized viewers by, um, by authorization level. Uh, as I mentioned earlier today, uh, we do have a, a bonus section. Uh, this, is, again, is available in the PowerPoint that you can download right now during the live presentation and will also be in the PDF. Uh, it goes into OP events uh, and how to use OP events to create some actionable reports as well. Uh, as I said, that's really outside the scope of today's webinar. Uh, we do have a whole separate uh, webinar series that does cover OP events and the reports that come out of OP events. But I wanted to make that information available for anyone who wanted to uh, continue diving into the subject matter and learning a bit more about actionable reports with Opmantic solutions and, and anyone who wanted to go beyond uh, NMIS 8 and, uh, and OP reports. So I'd like to thank everyone very much uh, for their time today. Uh, again, my name is Mark Henry. I'm a senior engineer here at Opmantic's North American office. I'm gonna turn off recording now.